Yeah, you know, first of all, Barnet then, and that sort of brings back memories of opening day um, mm. and, uh, and what a great start to the season it was going there. Um, I was only reminded this morning when I was thinking about it. Of course, all the goals came in the second half. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was an odd old game, but a great way to, to start your season, wasn't it? It was. Um, first half was good. You know, we, we created chances, but then, of course, second half was just fantastic. And when you want a game to all fall into place, it, it did in those moments. It doesn't doesn't always happen like that. We know that. But uh, on that day, it was, it was of course, really good. But, um, yeah, I don't expect uh, necessarily a second half just like that. Uh, I think they're vastly improved to where they were at, at the first point of the season. So um, it will be a different game, I think. Yeah, well, they've had a change of manager since then, and although they're they run another little sort of rocky run at the moment, that in the middle of that, they, they sort of shot up the table a bit. Five wins out of six at one point suggests that there's something there. Well, there is something there, and and what I see is some some good, uh, certainly some good individual players that can create things out of nothing. Uh, certainly further up the the field, and they've since the 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 moment when we played them at the start of the season, they're certainly more organised off ball. So. Uh, much bigger threat than what we faced I think at the start of the season where I think they had a lot of new players and was piecing it together and um, you could see that we capitalised on on that in a, um, uh, in a good way but they're definitely a, a stronger outfit than than the one that we faced on the opening game without a doubt yeah. Well so are you though aren't you at the moment six wins in a row does it does it feel like things are, does it feel like something's changed of late is it an extra belief or something Is because you're, you're banging the goals in as well yeah. at the moment um, yeah, maybe maybe the, the, the belief comes with good results. That 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 is just like a byproduct of getting good results. But I, when we when we had that those three games in a row that we lost, we didn't necessarily lose any belief. In fact, it just made us work harder at what we wanted to do. So uh, it just gave us more uh, things to work on and and things to put right. But I think you're right. We're a better team now than we were at the start of the season. Um, I think they've. The last 10 games to the first 10 games would probably suggest that. Um, but also the way in which we want to play, I think that you need to develop the relationships between the players and the understanding and, and that grows during the season. So I was always confident that I think we'd make progress through the season. And now we're in a place where we can't kind of sit on what we've got and, and be comfortable that we've made good progress and that we're playing some good football and scoring goals. I think if we get to a point where we just expect that to happen when we go out on the pitch, we'll get caught out. So we have to work really hard every day, uh, work really, really hard in the game so that we can kind of maintain that performance. And you are scoring a lot of goals at the moment. I mean, what, four against Southend, four against Kings Lynn, three yeah. against Wrexham, you know, yeah. plenty of plenty of goals at the moment. Um, I, I guess you're having to as well is, is the other side to that because there's bizarrely for six minutes in a row there's no there's no clean sheets in that for a while is that is that something that you're conscious of or or does it not matter so much because you're scoring so many I mean it, it doesn't matter if you concede one goal when you score three or four that's fair to say but at the same time it is something that we're conscious of it is something that we know that if we want to achieve things this season we have to tighten up and be better in that area we I think in the last five games we've gone one nil down, which is huge testament to the to the players and huge testament to uh, the character of the the guys in the dressing room that they really believe in what they're doing. But at the same time, it's not a wonderful habit to get into. You know, we we want to start games a little bit better and um, and and take the initiative more. But one thing that's good is if we do go a goal behind, we don't panic, we stay calm, we play our game. Um, and we create the chances. So, yeah, it's something that we're conscious of. We, we're working hard with off-ball stuff as well. And we do want to start knocking some clean sheets on the board as well. Is it a worry when, when you're winning games that you, you don't want to tinker with things too much, though? Because, you know, obviously you want to be able to stop that and conceding the goals, but you don't want to change too much in what you're doing, do you? Because ultimately you're winning matches. Yeah, I mean, we want to be quite bold in the way in which we play and, and expansive and attacking with that will mean that we're open and we demand a lot from the defenders defending more aggressively higher up the pitch and a lot of transitions so we, we, we obviously that our way of playing demands we, we open more space normally um, and we're not going to change that that's how we're going to play but we can still be better in, in certain moments so that we can prevent some of the chances that um, that come against us so it's just to work better in our way of playing to, to become more efficient with it 
Um, so yeah, I don't I don't think we need to tinker too much or change too many things, um, but but just to keep getting better at the way in which we want to do it. Team news wise, where where are you? Still waiting on uh, on Anthony Patterson coming back. Is he is he back now? He's not back. No, um, we were expecting him this week, but there was a setback in the uh, in the Sunderland side, and we just have to be a little bit patient and understanding there. Um, so there's nothing too much that we can do. He, he won't be ready this weekend. But having had a good dialogue with Sunderland, and I'm hoping that he's he's able to return early next week. That's what they've said. But again, so many things happen out, you know, internally with training and players and fitness. And and I think um, a setback to Lee Burge just meant that you know Pato just had to hold on, and they just had to secure something that end. So at the moment, we've um, we we will go without Pato. And we hope that he comes back next week. But in the meantime, you know, the three games that we've missed with him, we've won all three. I think Sam's played well. So, um, again, it's great competition in the squad. Is that difficult for you at the minute, not knowing from day to day, week to week, whether you're going to have him in back or not? Not really. I, no, no. I mean, of course, you'd rather know when somebody's coming back and what day. And, and I think we just, look, we, we, Sam's ultra, ultra professional, uh, plays well. Um, and has had a good season so far. That that competition is what we want at the moment. Sam has his spot and he's fighting to keep it. Pat will have to come in and work hard then, and that's just the nature of it. Um, you'd rather know when the players are coming in and out. But I think one thing that we've got used to with COVID is that you never know. You you can expect a player to come in and then he might test uh, positive for COVID and you've lost him for ten days. So we expect the unexpected anyway, and just prepare for that. I've got to ask you because it's January um, and and it's it's the law. Um, mm-hmm. Any any news on anything? Anything anything happening or not at the moment? Nope. I, I can say that I'm really happy that <laughs> it's very quiet and uh, very settled and calm and um, not hearing anything and that's great news for us. So we're everybody's training well and seems happy and the phone hasn't rang. So um, long may that continue through January. I'm always happy when January finishes and. The talk stops and we carry on with uh, with football, but at the moment, no, there's nothing, nothing happening. Uh, just finally, uh, the the club have dedicated the Notts Barnet game, of course, to the memory of of Colin Slater. Um, loads going on, flag of him in the cop end, and minutes of applause before kick off as well. So, for everybody who knew him uh, and worked with him, like I did for the best part of mm. sort of twenty years, it, it's going to be an emotional night, I think, off the pitch, isn't it? Yeah, I think so, and and I think one thing that we want to do as a as a team is is make sure that we honour that in the right way with a great performance. Um, that's what we can do from from uh, from our position. He's obviously a legend around the club and a legend for many many people, um, and means a lot to a lot of people. So the best that we can do is, of course, I think everything around will be an honour to him, and then it's our responsibility to make sure that we we also do that honour on the pitch as well.